so maybe like 20%. And are those, uh, are any of those in production of what you would consider like a pilot or production, production pilot? Okay, so more experimentation. There's um, plenty in production. Oh, okay, I missed that. <laughs> Thanks, Two. Jim. Two, oh, okay. Great. All right. Um, so a lot, as the panelists are really part of the communities, the open source communities that are driving this. I think one thing that a voice we don't have represented is are the enterprise requirements. So I think maybe towards the end of the panel, it'd be great to open it up for some dialogue where we can hear from you what you'd like to see. And uh, maybe after you learn a little bit more about the respective communities, you'll have a better sense of what you might want to ask the panelists. So I think we can, are you guys going to sit? Sure. sure. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome to stand. So I, I mean, I was reflecting, um, Hyperledger basically was born in December of 2015, although it didn't have the name Hyperledger at the time. So we're about like almost seven years in. And I think in the early days, a lot of it was just about, you know, which layer one are you using? And there were a lot of debates about which one's better. And I think now the industry's come to realizing it's a multi-chain world. People are far along enough that they use different protocols and they're thinking about connecting them. They have applications that might want to talk to different apps. We actually, um, for those of you who are members, had really good sessions yesterday where there was a chance of members to say what they're looking for um, going forward on interop and hybrid. So I encourage anyone next year to, to come to that. And if you're not a member, to can consider, one, that's one of the benefits is to get sort of the inside scoop and to be able to share. There was much more interactive dialogue versus this panel, which would be mostly just hearing from the leaders of these communities. But I did want to start just with introductions. So Rama, if you wanted to go first. And I, sure. just introducing myself, I'm uh, Sofia Lopez, one of the founders of Kaleido, which is a Web3 infrastructure platform. And we're very active with Hyperledger Firefly. OK, great. Hi, uh, I'm Rama. I'm a maintainer on the Weaver Labs project. So just a bit of history. Uh, I've been with IBM Research for uh, over 11 years now. Uh, I have been working with Hyperledger Technologies since the inception of the project. Uh, I, f I was sort of a beta tester for what used to be called Open Blockchain, which then morphed into Hyperledger Fabric. And uh, since then, I've been working on uh, different kinds of solutions. Uh, I've worked on Hyperledger Fabric performance measurement, actually not limited to Fabric, but Fabric was our main focus. And uh, since the end of 2018, I've been focused on the interoperability uh, goal. That is, uh, given that we have all these permission networks that are out there and so many uh, varieties of uh, DLTs, they're not all going away. So how do the, all these networks coexist? Because we are not going to have uh, one network to rule them all. We are not going to have all networks coalesce into mm -hmm. one. So how do you make them, uh, how do you make these uh, networks and these different DLTs work together? And uh, what exactly does that mean? What is the value add that we need to provide, which is, which is crucial to uh, growing the blockchain ecosystem? So. Hello, uh, I'm Takuma Takeuchi. Uh, I'm a maintainer of Hyper Hyper Cactus. Uh, I'm also uh, belonging to uh, uh, Fujitsu as a blockchain research manager. Yeah. So, uh, so, we, so, <clears throat> so uh, I'm, I'm working as a maintainer for two, two years, and so uh, with, the, uh, with the activity of the uh, development, development of, of Hyperledger characters and blockchain interoperability, so I like to accelerate the uh, so, uh, token, economy, st to token economy technology uh, uh, beyond, across, uh, beyond uh, various uh, industry, industry fields. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Jim Zhang, uh, one of the co-founders of Kaleido. Uh, before starting Kaleido, I was a committer on uh, Hyperledger Fabric. Um, uh, now I'm one of the maintainers on Firefly. Um, also a member of the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. Uh, I think today we're going to focus on uh, interop, which is one of the things that Firefly can be used for. But Firefly is a... Uh, a bigger project that covers a lot of integration concerns and um, uh, connecting to blockchains to have high quality uh, developer experience. Uh, we can touch on those uh, as we go along. 
Yeah, actually, I think, Jim, that's a great segue to one of the first questions that we all wanted to cover, which is what is the difference between integration and interoperability when you're looking at decentralized networks and uh, Web3 solutions? Okay, I guess I have the Mac. I can <laughs> start Well, on you this touched one. upon that with okay. your description of what you're doing. So. Yeah, yeah. So when we work with, with our customers, uh, we started Kaleido as a platform. We started with the blockchain layer to make sure it's very easy to stand up blockchains of all kinds of protocols. But then very quickly, we realized that our customers, when they build the full solution on blockchain, the blockchain itself is just 10%. The rest of the 90%, they have to have a queue to send transactions reliably. Uh, they have to have a event listener to, to get events from the chain uh, reliably. So they can coordinate uh, the off-chain uh, reactions to events on-chain. So a blockchain is not going to be a component that stands alone from the rest of the IT systems. It needs to uh, have ingestion of data uh, from, uh, from the rest of the IT systems. And when uh, certain events happen on blockchain, there needs to be, oftentimes there, there needs to be reactions in the rest of the IT systems. So between blockchain and the rest of the uh, core IT, that concern is mostly uh, categorized as integration. So blockchain can work with everything else uh, around them. Uh, interop uh, is mostly around uh, between blockchains. So, so you have one fabric doing, uh, doing let's say, uh, track and trace for your supply chain. When it moves to a certain stage, uh, you want to do payment on a separate network, maybe running on Ethereum using tokens to do payment. So those two transactions need to, need to happen in the atomic way. Uh, and that's about uh, interacting uh, interactions between two chains. Uh, so that's interop. Uh, so if you picture in your head uh, a two-layer uh, sort of picture, one is you have all kinds of uh, uh, blockchains and you have arrows going uh, across them. That's interop. But then you have your app layer that talks to uh, one or two or many of the blockchains. And from between the app and the blockchains, and between the app and your uh, core IT, that's Firefly. So I'm sure uh, the others will so have Takuma, other. So Takuma, yeah, what is Cactus's approach to oh. interoperability? Uh, so, uh, uh, so, not, uh, so, in, so, uh, among the, among the cactus development, so, the, so, the, uh, uh, I think it is, mo it, it is important is to, the, uh, so, uh, about, so, the, uh, blockchain di diversity. So, the, uh, so, as you know, so, the, uh, not, not only the Ethereum fiber, uh, Ethereum fi fabric, there are a lot of, there are, uh, uh, many types of blockchain. Uh, for example, the, uh, Hyperledger India, this is, so, uh, so dedicated blockchain for identity management. And also, uh, for example, uh, Hyperledger Iroha, this is, uh, so dedicated blockchain for CDBC asset. So, the, uh, <coughs> so in order to, so, the, uh, unifying, so, the, uh, the, A the API for the, uh, this heterogeneous blockchain, so, the, uh, I think it is, it is important to, uh, design and code cause the, uh, the, uh, uh, abstract, abstract feature to this APIs, yeah. Okay, and then Rama, well, just to explain to the audience, so Cactus was a contribution from Fujitsu and Accenture, and now, mm. Rama, you were part of Weaver, mm. so I was curious what Weaver's approach was to interoperability, and now Weaver and Cactus have combined, and it's <laughs> Cacti, yeah. so maybe you could comment on that as well. So sure. one is interoperability to Weaver, and then what does it mean that these two communities are coming together from a cross-chain perspective. Sure. I'll begin with your original question to Jim about the okay. difference between integration and uh, oh, yeah, great. interoperability. Okay. Yep. So I see it as uh, there's a spectrum of uh, solutions. So at its core, interoperability to me means the ability to uh, for two or more blockchain systems to be able to come together and uh, communicate and talk to each other in a way that can solve a purpose that requires all those systems to work together. Mm -hmm. So that in the mo is my most general definition of interoperability. Now, how uh, uh, how tight you want those blockchain systems to get, or how loosely coupled you want them to be, that's a choice you can make. So I think there's a spectrum of solutions you can have there. The closer they get, you can think of it as you're integrating two different blockchain systems. Uh, the more loosely coupled you get, 
you can think of it as a somewhat more independent kind of uh, interoperability uh, between the systems. So uh, the Weaver approach tries to uh, go uh, as close to the independent end of the spectrum as possible. So our core design principles involve uh, uh, if you have uh, your blockchain network, it's built on a particular DLT stack, be it Fabric or Bezu or any technology outside of Happy Ledger like Corda, you run your applications as you would. You do not have to change your stack. We will not go and ask Fabric to change its code. We will not go and ask Corda to change its code. But we will provide the enablers that allow you to uh, perform transactions that require some kind of cross-chain or cross-network operation. And we have a particular uh, taxonomy of such operations. We categorize them into the ability to share data from one smart contract in one ledger to a different smart contract in a different ledger. There's the ability to exchange assets or to conduct an atomic swap. And then there's the ability to transfer an asset from one ledger to another. That is, you burn an asset in a ledger and recreate it in, in another. So collectively, we uh, our observation was that this sort of covers almost all of the cases you want in a real uh, production grade uh, enterprise application, which involves more than one blockchain. So this is what interoperability means to us, the ability to conduct cross-network transactions across different ledgers, but allowing the networks to remain autonomous and uh, retain their own uh, self-governance uh, policies. Okay, and then just the final one I was curious for you to round out oh, yeah. with is Cact just <laughs> Weaver yes. coming together with Cactus, forming Cacti, so yeah. what do you, uh, what do you feel that means for those communities with respect to like interop and the roadmap there? Sure. So just a brief history. I think uh, Takuma already uh, uh, referred to this. And I think you've, you've heard the history in uh, presentations, if you were here yesterday and also I think today. Cactus started in uh, the early 2020 in the uh, last uh, Hyperledger Global Forum. Uh, and it's been an open source project for more than two and a half years now. Uh, we were uh, started off as, a, as an IBM research project in uh, 2019, and uh, we published uh, research papers on it for about a uh, uh, year and a half, going to two years, and then we open sourced it as a labs project in uh, at the end of uh, Q1 of last year. And uh, uh, the, the philosophies of the two projects are quite uh, related. We, we both aim for the design principles that I just articulated. And uh, there are some differences in the technical approach, but they broadly fall under the spectrum that I talked about. Uh, so the goal of bringing the two projects together was, one, we aim to achieve the same thing. But uh, by bringing the two projects together, we can provide a spectrum of uh, features that uh, uh, you as network developers or administrators can use. Uh, you can pick and choose from a set of features, uh, and then you can use a common platform that will be, uh, that, that, we, that we're going to create, which will, uh, through the merge between Cactus and Weaver, uh, and uh, that way you can uh, uh, engineer your networks to conduct transactions across, across each other. Great, thanks. Maybe we start, go back to Jim now. Um, <clears throat> so Jim, just to help the audience, he's probably wondering, there's all these projects we're hearing about, you know, how would you differentiate when it would be useful to work with Firefly community on projects versus the new combined Cacti community? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd say Firefly, you want to use Firefly for every project you have a blockchain component in because it just makes it much easier to uh, to interact with blockchain. So, but it's, it's not fair because we're, we want to focus on uh, interop. So with in, in, if interop is your concern, Firefly can still help you because a single Firefly instance can be connected to multiple blockchains. It's very easy. Uh, in fact, uh, I think it was announced in the previous sessions that we just released 1.1, uh, which has a very significant enhancement compared to 1.0 is uh, you have a single instance that can be connected to multiple chains on the per namespace basis, uh, which means uh, what you can do within your application layer with Firefly is you can coordinate uh, among multiple blockchains. So you can listen to event in your fabric chain uh, with the track and trace using that example. Uh, so when the event uh, f triggers that says this, this uh, batch of goods has arrived at 
at its destination, then you can uh, do the corresponding payment uh, on the other chain. So with Firefly, this just makes it very simple to do. Of course, um, if you, you know, ask the uh, interop experts, they will say this is one mode of interop, which is going through a trusted third party or a trusted uh, uh, off-chain component, which you know, uh, is um, depending on your needs, uh, can be a, a fair uh, uh, option for you to choose. And Firefly is pretty easy to, uh, to build on top of to achieve this type of architecture. Um, and I'll, I'll let the others comment on other modes of uh, interop and why you might use uh, cacti Yeah, for. so Takuma, maybe some use cases for cacti? Oh, and right. any if there's any in production or you'd want to share as part of that? Yeah, so uh, this is not production ready, but so, uh, this is this is uh, some uh, so uh, so uh, proof, of, proof of concept. So, so the, uh, now uh, so uh, I I I I am using uh, cactus uh, no, new name cacti for the, uh, climate change action. So this is so the uh, so uh, the PO, uh, our uh, this is POC with so the IHI. This is so Japanese heavy com heavy industry company. So the, uh, so this is so uh, so cactus has a role of the connector be, uh, between. So the uh, the, uh, uh, the ca ca carbon ca carbon accounting so uh, leisure and so the uh, and the env uh, environmental uh, value leisure yeah so the, uh, so uh, for uh, so so uh, in order, so yeah so uh, this is one, one of the uh, use case of the uh, so the uh, the yeah the uh, climate change yeah thank you okay so. And ESG type use cases. And Rama, anything you'd want to add in terms of use cases or just approaches? I think Jim mentioned one approach to interoperability. If you want to add any any other sort of patterns of deployment that sure. you're seeing. Sure. Uh, I mentioned the three broad interoperability modes earlier, data sharing, uh, asset exchanges, asset transfers. Mm -hmm. the one use case I'll talk about is something you can uh, uh, you, you can read about. It's uh, uh, So we were last year was used by uh, uh, Bank of France and HSBC in a, mm -hmm. uh, in a set of use cases which involved uh, experimentation on central bank digital currency. So what the scenario involved was you had uh, different networks. They were, one of them was built on Fabric, another was built on Corda, and uh, we were doing different kinds of transactions across them. So there was one network which maintained securities another which maintained uh, CBDC accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, a natural use case there was if you're paying for, if you uh, want to sell a security on one network, on the securities network, you want to get payment, but where will you get the payment? On the uh, digital currency network. So you need the ability to do an atomic swap across the two networks. So you, c you can't just have a security getting transferred in one network and without any guarantee that the payment will happen on the other. So engineering a cross-network transaction using a uh, 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 a trustworthy protocol is important. And uh, uh, with Weaver, uh, we have uh, such an asset exchange protocol using the uh, HTLC mechanism, which many of you may have heard of. If not, uh, I'll be talking about it in a presentation on uh, Weaver tomorrow. Uh, then there were other instances where you had to, uh, uh, these networks were doing coupon redemptions uh, for which they needed to communicate uh, ledger state or uh, some records in one ledger to a different ledger. So they used the uh, Weaver in a, what we call the data sharing mode, which is where you, uh, one from one ledger, you can make a request to another, and the uh, requestee provides not just the data, but also authenticity proof that the record was, uh, that the record is uh, valid and was committed in a, uh, in a previous transaction and the receiving network can then get the data and then validate that the proof is, uh, uh, is accurate. So uh, these were several cases that were uh, uh, successfully demonstrated in that uh, uh, POC last year. And uh, yeah, I think I'll, uh, maybe we can touch on other topics later. Okay. Um, anyone else want to add any other use cases? Just going to open it up before I okay, yeah. go to the um, next topic. Use cases that involve cross-chain, there are a ton of them, and we continue to see more and more. Uh, earlier in my session, uh, talking about technology adoptions in recent years, I was very encouraged to see that uh, a whole bunch of advanced technologies that when I built the chart for, I thought those are bleeding edge. But when I asked the audience, are you doing these? Everybody, well, for every one of them, there was 
bunch of hands uh, going up. So I was uh, very uh, encouraged uh, to see that. So specifically for um, uh, hybrid chains, I think that's uh, w one of the more popular patterns uh, with enterprise use cases because um, in the previous years, the enterprise space has been focusing on permission chains, right? Solving existing pain points uh, or creating a uh, token economy in the in this controlled walled gardens uh, space, but then uh, pretty uh, quickly they realized, okay, I've got I've solved my pain points, but how do I encourage other other players in the in the industry to participate? You need some sort of uh, incentive, right? Nothing like a token to to <laughs> act as an incentive. <laughs> yeah. So they uh, a lot of them figure out that if I allow the crypto holders to inject their values into this ecosystem and do that investment, uh, let the, the proceeds grow, and so at some point they can cash out. That would be a great uh, way to, uh, to encourage uh, usage of the ecosystem they built. So, um, and then we, we'll, we see naturally a uh, interop scenario, right? You have the side chain, you have the public chain, and there's token bridges acting in between. Uh, so there's a lot of very similar scenarios like that um, uh, coming into, uh, into um, uh, space. Okay. Thank you. I did want to transition a little bit about the challenges or gotchas as you're looking at cross-chain or interoperability around security, or privacy, or usability, things that um, folks in the audience should keep in mind as they're building their solutions out. Yeah. Uh, so um, me, 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 okay. Yeah. So uh, so uh, so uh, in uh, in the cactus uh, cactus issue. So the, uh, so for example, Firefly has a, a great so the, uh, GUI management tool, but so the cactus ha that doesn't have yet the such 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 GUI tool yet. So the, uh, so uh, in. Uh, in Cactus, we need so uh, we uh, yeah. It, uh, the, uh, I will uh, I, I will I will consider about so the, uh, creating uh, de de developing the G GUI GUI management uh, GUI uh, management management tool uh, uh, for the uh, management ma for the, for the manage managing so the uh, business business logic yeah. And so the, uh, I think so that this uh, this Cactus GUI is useful for uh, for useful for the uh, so, uh, Firefly's uh, knowledge and course. So that, uh, maybe uh, we uh, there's, a, there's a possibility that we uh, we are collaborate. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and Rama, if you mm. want to add anything, sure. I'll deal with each of those topics in a little bit. So security. Uh, one of the express goals that we had when we were creating Beaver was uh, you already have an uh, you. You're building a rather complex network. If you take Fabric, you have you have to build uh, you have to bring together several set of nodes running under different organizations. You have to decide which of them are endorsing, which of them are committing. You have to select yet another set of order nodes. It's a rather complex uh, uh, structure, and there are a lot of hidden pitfalls when it comes to when a, that a security expert can look at and say, okay, you you, you may have a problem here. One thing we explicitly, explicitly did not want to do was to increase the burden on security professional. We wanted to make sure that we did not increase the uh, trust footprint that you would require if you use Weaver as a solution to, uh, for your network to interoperate with another. So what we did was we, uh, we tried to institute mechanisms that you can use as uh, augmentations to what you you already have in your network. Uh, you you're already like take a fabric network. You're already in, uh, deploying and running chain code. We will just require you to run one extra piece of chain code that will uh, provide some function that you need. Uh, you 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 extend your uh, uh, client applications to just import Weaver libraries to trigger particular calls, and you add one more component which is we call a relay, but which uh, if we if you have time, we can talk about standards, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are talking with other people about standardizing into a sort of common gateway appliance for networks. Uh, but when you add a relay to your network, like an ordering service, it, uh, it, it's, a, it's an extra component. We, we want to make sure that the relay is completely trustless. And you don't have to trust it for as, you don't use it as a trusted third party. So. Security issues are very important. I mean, if uh, if if my if the solution that uh, we are providing to your network is uh, results in additional security vulnerabilities, we are likely not going to use it. So we wanted to eliminate or at least minimize any security issues. So 
uh, we have some, uh, we have a lot of documentation on that. Uh, we have some research, so uh, there may be still a lot of work to do on that. Uh, we have to make sure that it's validated by security professionals and all of that. Uh, privacy uh, is another uh, topic. I mean, uh, privacy is hard enough within the network as it is. Uh, in Fabric, we have different solutions for like uh, channels, PDCs, and you may have heard the talks on Fabric private chain code. Uh, Cross-chain privacy is yet another dimension of heart. So <laughs> I don't claim to have solved the problem. It's an active research question, so uh, uh, would solicit all your uh, thought and input on that. Usability, uh, I think there's a lot we can learn from Firefly in this respect. Uh, uh, we do want to make sure that we are not trading off usability. I mean, security is great. We don't want to completely give up usability for that. So uh, at least in, in, uh, in Cactus and Weaver, we have uh, APIs that make it rather quite easy for developers to handle. And uh, uh, yeah, we will be looking to Firefly to uh, actually lead the way on that and we'll be borrowing as much as possible. Okay. I actually was thinking, uh, we have about 10 minutes left. I wanted to ask if there's any questions from the audience, since we've got some great subject matter experts on the stage, and then you could get a sense for what's on people's mind and what they're looking for from the community. So I think I could bring the mic over. Is there anyone who has any questions? OK. Maybe you could say who you are and what you're working on. Yeah, my name is uh, Vipin Bharatan. Oh, I'm wor the working... famous Vipin. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, my question is, why does everybody hanker after uh, atomic swaps? It doesn't happen in the real world right now because especially when trading securities and so on, there's a settlement delay and all, all that. Uh, so uh, it has other... Uh, ramifications because security trading happens uh, in a setup where there is credit uh, involved, meaning you, when you don't settle, like if I sell you a security and you don't pay me right away, there are many reasons for that. You know, you're, you're a bank, I'm a bank, uh, or you're a big customer. So why does everybody go for atomic swaps? It is a, uh, it is a, uh, it's a practice in uh, networks like Bitcoin and all that because of obvious, uh, I mean, I don't know about Bitcoin, but other networks because it's a public network with very unknown participants, mm -hmm. but. Uh, okay. Well, tough question from a financial services expert. <laughs> uh, who wants to take it? Jim? So, yeah, there's, there's a saying in Chinese that the, um, we'll, we'll let the experts go last. So I can just <laughs> throw something out so you guys can uh, hit that. Um, my view is atomic swap is just one of the more mature um, uh, cross-chain technologies that there is definitely a need for. Uh, may not make sense in the, some of the uh, financial uh, industry scenarios, but definitely makes sense in some other scenarios. And it absolutely makes sense when you don't have uh, trusted parties in between. So I think that's what mostly uh, this is used for, that the two parties that are doing swaps don't trust each other. Each other. They need a mechanism to make sure they can exit uh, without the other party. Uh, when the other party is cheating, they, they can exit without uh, any loss. But I think it, it definitely makes, uh, it's definitely true that it's just one mechanism. For example, the token bridge I was uh, uh, mentioning earlier doesn't do swap, but it's very useful, right? So there are different uh, modes of interop. Yeah, uh, also, uh, I'm also, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, hash time, uh, so, the, uh, atomic swap is very, very useful, uh, very useful in the, for, for, especially, so, the financial situation. And uh, so, the, uh, but so, the, uh, uh, so, but so the so uh, atomic swap is uh, useful in uh, in the uh, numeric asset. But so the, uh, we so uh, pro we uh, we should provide the more so uh, a ordinary uh, so uh, so uh, uh, the ordinary uh, method uh, ordinary ordinary based method uh, and so the, uh, and also the uh, cactus provide so the uh, sub uh, sub feature of the uh, HTLC and so the, uh, we uh, we cover the, the, these uh, use case yeah. 
So the answer can be different depending on whether you put on a technologist hat or a business person's hat. So as a technologist, you know, going from the classical database world where you have system, you have protocol like two-phase commit, right? They are rather elaborate protocols. You can you can allow different replicas to just um, sync on their own time without regard to uh, atomicity or consistency, right? But two-phase protocol, commits protocols serve a real purpose. So from a technologist's perspective, doing an atomic swap across two decentralized chains in a decentralized manner seems like the right solution. So now putting on a business person's hat, you're right. I mean, we have, uh, when we, uh, uh, what we've heard from uh, clients are performance matters a lot. And uh, uh, atomic swaps, if they do not deliver the adequate level of performance, in those settings, we may ultimately end up using uh, solutions that uh, involve trusted parties, which do not, but without strict atomicity. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. To stir the pot. Need some pot stirs here. We have like five minutes left. Oh, great. All right. Maybe you could let everyone know who you are as well and what you're working on. Thank you. Hi, my name is Flora. I am from Pfizer. I lead the blockchain division of Pfizer. Uh, my question is, um, like we have cross-chain, we have all the technologies, great technologies and great community working behind that. Uh, but from the enterprise sector, what we face is like the use case of all these technologies, right? So is there any place where I can go and find out Firefly is there? These are the enterprises using Firefly for their use case. Or uh, Cactus or Cacti is there with Weaver. These are the enterprises using that one so that I can use that as an example and build a business case out of it. Thank you. Your Jim is smiling. You want to lead it off again? <laughs> 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 uh, it's a great question. I think that's um, something we're continuing to work on. Uh, the, uh, we have many customers uh, at different stages of uh, adopting the technology. Some have been using them, like Gen 1 of Firefly, in production for many years. Uh, some are just uh, uh, porting to from Gen 1 to Gen 2, which is what we have uh, on, for, on Hyperledger Firefly. Uh, some are just starting to uh, 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 build on Firefly. Uh, I think we can, we definitely uh, can go back and and do uh, some inventory. Uh, I, I do agree that this will help um, the potential uh, prospect uh, adopters to see, okay, this is used here, that makes sense, that used there, that makes sense, and I'm pretty close to that kind of use case, so maybe I should try that too. Yeah, I uh, appreciate the, the, the yeah, feedback. Yeah, so Takuma and Ram, any comments <clears throat> on that? Yeah, uh, so uh, we also uh, uh, maybe all, almost the same same comment, but uh, but so, uh, we we are, uh, I'm also the, uh, trying to uh, the various uh, use case using so the, uh, uh, cross chain technology and so the, uh, but so the, uh, so uh, I like to ch challenge to the uh, other another uh, another another use case uh, yeah another the use case yeah so the uh, yeah so I agree, I agree with yeah thank you uh, thanks so. Uh, I mentioned one use case that Weaver was uh, used for last year in a proof concept. Uh, there are several others, like with uh, uh, Firefly, as Jim mentioned, uh, in, in different stages of uh, work with the client. There's some that uh, being actively worked on, some where we're talking to them. Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to share details of that right now, but hopefully very soon. Yeah. And uh, even with, cac with uh, the cacti, with uh, that is, uh, the cactus and the Weaver team have been having uh, periodic meetings with several organizations to uh, understand their, their needs. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, put out more information as it comes by very soon. So now I put on my Kaleido hat. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, you're welcome to come to us and then we'd be uh, very happy to share privately with you uh, more information. And I don't know if we have NDA with Pfizer, but we can share more. Yeah. and then. I, what I liked about Flora's question is it's very pragmatic. Uh, and I, I was thinking each of the projects has a web page that's part of the Hyperledger website. And just, I mean, it sounds like 
the, what you did with the Bank of France and HSBC is public. So if that could go on the web page for Cacti. And then for Firefly, I know we've had various webinars where people have spoke from like Life and Annuity, Nationwide and Prudential, uh, PNC, the large car, um, sort of first notice of loss use case and other ones where, so maybe just putting a link to the webinars where they were actually speaking and then a list of who the companies are, large conglomerates in Thailand, trade finance with uh, a bunch of Macquarie, Mitsui and others, but, but they're not on the webpage for the projects. So that could be like a very easy way to make more visible what others are doing in the industry so that people can look at the use cases and say, oh, this is something people are really using. I could even call them up and ask them what their experience is like. I could show this internally to my management to just show there's adoption of these technologies. So that was a great question. Hopefully we, we can implement uh, that right away. Uh, so speaking on behalf of Hyperledger, I would say that there are a number of user stories that okay. exist already on the website. Okay. Uh, not necessarily about interoperability, okay. but I think this is a good place to add those as well. Yeah, and that's uh, Tracy who leads the technical steering committee. He does a great job leading. Yep. <laughs> but thanks, um, so more great context and uh, places to look at. So we're almost done, but if someone has like a burning question they want to ask before we adjourn, you could probably squeeze. Oh, Daniela does? <laughs> All right, great. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> thanks, Daniela. Uh, question was, uh, what can Hyperledger help the projects uh, to get more adoption and to get uh, better uh, uh, ingestion of uh, requirements from the uh, customers? Um, I think you guys are already doing a really great job because when we open the booth, so many people want to come to Firefly booth and, and, and learn about it. Um, <laughs> But I guess uh, there was one uh, incidence where we were somewhat surprised that um, seems like our leadership team uh, from from the foundation can be told more about Firefly in general because a lot of them don't speak about Firefly when they when they give talks. So I think uh, that I don't know what's the best way to to make that happen. But I think um, when they go on stage and talk about uh, um, Hyperledger in general, uh, just mention Firefly, what it does, and mention Cactus, what it does. I think that, that, that'll have great effect. Yeah, um, so almost the same. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, mention, mention Hyperfire Hi 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 Cactus and, and oh, Cacti. And also, the, uh, we are, we, we are always waiting in the, uh, so Discord channel on Hi Hyperledger. So, the, uh, uh, please, please, uh, please, please feel, feel free to, uh, contact us. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'll echo what, uh, Jim and Takuma said. I think Hyperledger is already doing a great job at, uh, promoting all the projects under Hyperledger, the main ones and the labs. Uh, we have, uh, uh, it's super easy to uh, uh, start a GitHub repo, uh, host Discord channels, everything. So if uh, any of you want to contribute, please go to the GitHub repositories, go to the Discord uh, channels, etc. Maybe the one thing that Hyperledger can do in addition is uh, like projects like ours, which are um, inherently uh, enabling other different blockchains to link together. Maybe you can advertise that a bit more. So we have uh, several different uh, different blockchains and other kinds uh, like Indy, Sawtooth, Iroha, Fabric, etc. Uh, maybe it can be advertised uh, uh, upfront on on the Hyperledger uh, forums on the main website, for example. That uh, the way to link these systems or the way to uh, provide a common view across different chains uh, look to projects like Firefly or or Cacti. So that'd be great. 
Oh, Charles has a question. Maybe this is the last one. Okay. This better. This is going to be a, a good question, right? That's Dorothy Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the EEA, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, has a cross-chain working group. Uh, the EEA is not there to build software, right? The Hyperledger manages open source software development projects mm -hmm. and we're trying to essentially write specifications so that multiple software projects like these can actually interoperate and work together. And so the question is how do we how do we tighten that collaboration and how do we make it clear? You know, mm. people like Data Chain who you know produce software, are members of both, um, people like Consensus who are working on the standards that EEA is trying to develop. How do we tighten that conversation and make sure we're actually talking to you guys as implementers of you know, what amount to reference implementations and therefore you know, core drivers of what should the, the specification say and how it should work? Mm, okay. Yeah, I think we had a good chat uh, yesterday about this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, when we are designing uh, uh, protocols for interoperability, we want to be, I mean, it would be great, because we are in the business of uh, mitigating the diversity and heterogeneity you see, right? So standards are a best friend here. And uh, I mentioned there's a standards, uh, there's a group that's working towards trying to standardize uh, inter-network communication protocols. And it would be great if the EA uh, could uh, join that and contribute to that. Uh, if we can get standards in this world that are as uh, ubiquitous and universally accepted as the TCP IP or HTTP protocols are, then we are 90% of the way towards being interoperable. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so we are very glad to uh, so, uh, discuss it and discuss about so, uh, so uh, standardization of the uh, cross chain. So, uh, so uh, later, so we discuss. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Charles. Uh, Charles has been leading the the many standards uh, authoring uh, at EEA, which I used to actively uh, participate. <laughs> um, but I think uh, we need to sort of think about a balance between allowing the, the community to, to independently uh, innovate versus at some point say, we've got enough uh, diversity in the approaches, let's think about how to work together. Um, I think it's always a challenge for EEA to create a standard, not too early, uh, to sort of stifle uh, innovation or, you know, nobody look at it, right? If you can publish standards, but nobody looks at it, it's, it's not very useful. It's just a spec, not a standard. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, but, but, but I think standard is, is critical for the cross-chain uh, space because naturally uh, this is about working together, which standard is the best for. So definitely looking forward to uh, uh, going back to contribute more over there. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I, I have a mic. So I guess we'd close out, I would just reflecting with the EVM becoming somewhat of an industry standard, EVM compatible chains, even across different layer ones. Uh, it's interesting some of the, those mechanisms emerge. So wanted to thank everyone on the panel for participating and an audience for some great questions. I do believe there's something at six o'clock, so like a meetup, a Dublin meetup that's happening in the Solution Center. So there might be some people external to the Hyperledger community, but blockchain leaders who will be here. So it might be a chance to meet some interesting people who are, are local and looking to learn more about what we do at Hyperledger. But I thank you all, and probably we'll see you all in the hallways uh, during the next few days. Thanks, everyone.